Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Core Church Online. For those of you uh, that are joining us for the very first time, or if you're new, my name is Eric, and I'm one of the pastors here, and we are so glad to have you join us on a very special day uh, as we celebrate eight years. Core Church is eight, and we are so excited to be celebrating. Uh, this day is a big day for us, and what we're doing is we're bringing our entire series called Restful to a close as we celebrate eight years of history. We've been talking about how to live a restful life in a restless world. And during the first week, we talked about hope for the heart. Uh, Pastor Brad said this, hope for the heart is found as I abide in the Almighty. And the second week, we talked about healing for the soul. And Pastor Brad said this, that God's heart is for your healing. And last week, uh, our, our lead pastor, he talked about peace. And I think if there was ever anything that we needed right now in our lives during this time and during this season in the world, uh, it's peace. And Pastor Brad said this, peace of mind is found in persistent prayer. And I loved what he said later on in his message. He said that I can press on in peace when I press through in prayer. I can press on in peace when I press through in prayer. So I've got a question for you. How did you do this week? What's robbing you of your peace? And how were you able to press through in prayer? I want you to just take 30 seconds and whether you're at your neighborhood gathering, I want you to turn and I want you to talk to somebody about that. Type it in the chat. How did you do this week when it came to pressing through in prayer? Take 30 seconds to do that. So this series has been all about our four core values. And here's our four core values. Hope for the heart, healing for the soul, peace of mind, and purpose in the world. And those weren't just things that we plucked out of nowhere. Like they didn't just kind of fall from the sky or wasn't just a thought that we had after a really good cup of coffee. These, these come from Scripture. These come from the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 39. It says this. You must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important to love your neighbor as yourself. That's where we get our mission as a church. We say it every single week that we exist to help people find the hope, the healing, the peace, and the purpose that is found in Jesus. And as we bring this series to a close on Anniversary Sunday, we're going to be talking about purpose. So if you've got your Bible with you, I want you to get that out. And if you don't have a Bible, I highly encourage you to download version. I think that'll be really helpful for you. I read out of the New Living Translation. And uh, so get your Bible open, whether it is a, it is a old-fashioned paper Bible like I've got in front of me. I just, I just can't not read from a paper Bible. I just love it. Or if you have it on a device, that's fine too. And go to Psalm 139. Now this particular psalm was written by David, and this psalm is more of a of a hymn of worship, uh, a song of praise to give God glory as we focus on his power and his might. And this is Psalm 139, verse 13 through 18, and it says this. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Let's pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for eight years of history at Core Church. And we celebrate all that you've done in these eight years. And we're excited for what is going to happen in the future. But today we pause to celebrate and to give you glory. And I pray that as we continue to talk about our purpose and as we continue to open your word, I pray for, for all of us that are joining together online that you just speak through us through your word in this morning. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So Core Church is eight which means, if you don't know what eight years is all about, 
It means that we have arms and legs that seem too long for our body. It means that we can read simple sentences, and it now means that we can tie our own shoelaces. So we have arrived at being eight years. So obviously, that is about the eight-year development of a child, not of a church. So when we think about all of these, these eight years that we've experienced uh, as Core Church, some incredible things have happened. And my family and I have been able to be a part of, of Core Church for the last six years And we are just nothing but excited about what God is doing and what God is going to continue to do. And today, what we are talking about is purpose. And here at Core Church, we are passionate about people finding their purpose because we believe this at the core of who we are. We believe that everybody was created on purpose and that everybody has been created for a purpose. And if you've been asking yourself that question, like, what is my purpose? Like, what am I on earth? What am I here on earth to do? well, then this is the perfect service for you to join together because we're talking about how everybody has uh, the same primary purpose and how everybody has a secondary purpose. And what we believe is that everybody has the same primary purpose, which, which is to take the hope, the healing, the peace, and the purpose of Jesus into our world, into our schools, into our workplace. Wherever you are, whoever you're around, we're to take the hope, healing, peace, and purpose of Jesus with us into our day, into our week, into our families, and into our lives. That is our primary purpose and our primary focus. But we also believe that everybody has a secondary purpose, a secondary purpose that is unique to each and every individual. And that is the purpose that is lived out in your workplace, as a career, as a hobby, in your family, in your school, on your team. Whatever that secondary purpose is, is unique to you that you carry with you into your everyday life. And each of us has been wired by God specifically for a primary purpose and for a secondary purpose. But I think what is interesting is sometimes we can get distracted and sometimes we can settle. And sometimes we can focus on something that really isn't our secondary purpose. And we wonder why we feel like we're just kind of coasting or just kind of surviving through life. We can settle for someone else's ideas or someone else's opinions of what we should be doing or somebody, somebody's opinion of who we should become or who we should be in general when God has created us to stand out and God has created us to stand apart. And remember, we've all been created on purpose And we've all been created for a purpose. And God has created each one of us to live out that purpose in a unique way. And uh, to give us some more insight on this, look back at verse 13 and verse 14. It says this, You made all the delicate inner parts of my body, and you knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. When was the last time that you talked about yourself that way? Your workmanship is marvelous. Referring, David's referring to himself, how, how wonderful I know it. When was the last time you said that about yourself? When was the last time that you really stopped to think about how wonderfully complex you are? Like just as an individual, how wonderfully complex you are. How, how there never has been and there never will be another person that is like you. That's why we are so passionate about people finding their purpose because only you can do it the way that you do it. I I play the guitar, and a lot of people play the guitar, and a lot of people sing, and a lot of people lead worship. A lot of people do that, but but I'm the only one that can do it the way that I can do it. Each one of us are hardwired to do something very specifically. So don't settle for another idea of who you should be or how you should be or who you should become. What is it that God has created you to do and designed you to do? And to do more of that, that is your secondary purpose. We've all been created on purpose, and we've all been created for a purpose. Our self-doubts and our insecurities, they can keep us from believing this. But what God wants us to understand is that we are loved by him and that he has placed his hand of blessing on our lives to live out our purpose. And no one else can do that but you. And maybe that's hard for you to believe. Maybe that's hard for you to to really wrap your head around. And maybe it's because in your life, maybe God seems distant. Or maybe it's because you've got no clue where to start when it comes to your purpose. Look back at verse 17 and verse 18. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. I love that. 
And here's what I, I really don't want us, here's what I don't want us to miss. David focused on the love that God had for him. When he felt like God was distant, when he wasn't really sure what to do or how to live out his purpose, what did he do? He stopped and he focused on God's love that he had for him. He focused on God's love and God's presence in his life. And that is, that is what we need to do. This specifically is for us. When it comes to living out your purpose, focus on God's love for you. Focus on God's presence in your life every single day. When you wake up with the knowledge that God is with you, anything is possible. Anything can happen. When you wake up with the knowledge that everywhere you go, every encounter that you have, anything that you experience, that God's spirit is with you moving with you throughout the day. It's not just something that we experience when we come to an online service. It's something that we experience every single moment of every single day that God's spirit and God's presence is moving with us, guiding us and directing us in the encounters that we have and in the way that we work and the friends that we spend time with, the family that we get to live life with. God is with us. His spirit and his presence is moving with us, and that's what helps us live out our purpose. You've been created on purpose, and you've been created for a purpose. This is what our core groups are talking about right now when they gather. We're looking at eight core practices of every Christ follower, and every single week during this series, we've been looking at two of them. And the two core practices that are the best at helping you discover and figure out your purpose and to live that out are these two core practices of generous giving and sacrificial serving. And if you want to know what your purpose is, if you want to know where to start figuring that out, start with generous giving and sacrificial serving. Start with those two core practices. And what I, uh, what I want to do right now is I want to introduce you to some people right here at Core Church that are living out their purpose by doing just that. Our lead pastor, Brad, and his wife, Laura, they had the chance to sit down with some people, some of our people here at Core Church, and talk about their purpose and talk about how they're living that out and how, how they're serving God. And the first one is with our friend named Luke. Check out this video. So we're talking about how we are living our life on purpose, that you were created uh, on purpose for a purpose. All of us have a primary purpose, and that is to take the hope, healing, peace, and purpose of Jesus into the world. But we also have a personal purpose. And so this is Luke McLaughlin. And a lot of you know uh, his other half better than you probably know Luke. Luke's kind of behind the scenes, works in core kids, but mm -hmm. uh, Celeste sings on stage. Oh my goodness, that girl can sing. Yes, she can. But Luke, okay. the reason we're doing this right now is because you're in quarantine because Celeste has got COVID. Um, real quick, how's she doing? Uh, she's doing okay. She's... Um maybe has a little fever i don't know just she's doing okay but prayers are appreciated yeah absolutely yeah. man and uh pray you're negative right now as far as you know yes hopefully <laughs> but yeah but you're just going to be in quarantine so yeah as we talk about this this personal purpose like in that talk about this this dating app now you first of all let me back up you're an oru student and I think this is so awesome that you are in school and you're like, I'm not going to let me that stop me from this idea that God's given to you. But it's a dating app. Talk to us about what you're, what you're developing. Okay, so um, just like a background on me, by the way, I'm, just, I'm a senior at ORU. Um, I'm a business management major. And um, yeah, so now on the app, so I kind of like, we'll just, I love Shark Tank. Um, oh, and yeah. I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> and I just was like, I was listening to this idea and it was about relationships and I was like, but it was just an awful idea. And I was, and then, but what the thought process did for me and I was like, there's really not a lot of things out there that really push positivity in relationships. Because when you think about it, you're like all the money is in like the singles because they're like, oh, they're desperate to find somebody. So like, it's like, so I guess there like, isn't as much in the relationship stuff. So I was like, that's where like my thought process started. Um, and what the app does is it'll come with like six different like sections where it's like an outdoor date or like a dinner for two or like, or like, so, like spontaneous or to go 
um, like a night of the arts, like movies or theater, and then like it'll come with like different price options, and you click the two, like what you feel like doing and how much you kind of feel like spending, and then it'll generate different ideas for you to do where you are. Oh my gosh, so, I love that because yeah. I had an eye day every week. Yeah. And yeah. we want to find different ways to date. So we'll be downloading yeah. the app. <laughs> Thank Even you. though we've been married 36 Our years, man. Our biggest thing is we, 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 we can't figure out what yeah. to do on our day. Yeah. yeah. But, and when you think, because you said this, you know, like, I mean, like the world needs another like dating app or any kind of app out there, but, but you're very intentional. You want couples, the, your idea behind this is for, you want couples to be successful. And yeah. Yeah. Um, so to go back, um, when the idea first started, I, my idea, my brain is always flowing with, you know, my family is an entrepreneurship family. So, but, so it was kind of just another one of those ideas I was kind of into it and I was like, this actually could work, but I was sitting um, with my brother and his sister-in-law and they're dropping off their, uh, my nephew and they're like, man, what do you want to do tonight? And they're just like, uh, let's go to like, let's go to Buffalo Wild Wings or something like that. And then the wife was like, oh, we always go there. And then they started talking for like 20 minutes yeah. and then they bring it back up. So where are we going? I like, don't even know. And they're like, my brother's just like, let's just go to Buffalo Wild Wings. And she's like, oh, okay. So at that moment, I was like, this is a huge problem. And then I started thinking about myself and I was like, I've been dating Celeste at the time. It was only for like a year. And I was like, we've gone to like five places since we started dating. Like, and we just do the same thing. Yeah. So now something that Celeste and I have been trying to do is like, live the the app is called our date we've been trying to live like that life before it's even out and it's just like the experiences the different foods that we're trying and like going to these different places it's really like giving us memories and like new cool things so like that's the goal is just for couples to continue dating yeah see that's what i that that right there I is what it. i love what you're saying is that it's 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 all how you frame what you're doing because you could just say hey it's a great way for me to make money I'm an entrepreneur. I can get rich off this real quick. And, and, and that could potentially happen. Hopefully it does happen for yeah. you. But this idea that you're like, no, I want couples to date and I want their dates to be enriching and full and of memories. Interactive. And, yeah, I love that. And let's throw in this. You've got to tell everybody about the ads because, you know, every app tends to have ads, but tell them what you're doing uniquely with the ads. Um, so people kind of get frustrated with like ads and pop-up ads on your apps and like, and I understand, but I was kind of like the thought process came from me just like thinking, okay, like it'd be cool if I'm like, I don't need the ads because I make money from a different way in the app. But I was like, what if I use the ads to raise money and, you know, support uh, a certain thing. And I was kind of thinking about it and I was like, mm -hmm domestic violence, domestic abuse is a huge problem in America. And I was doing research on it and you'll be blown away. I think it's 8 million people in America a year are a victim of domestic abuse. Oh, wow. So, wow. and the big issue is in like rural areas, not because there's not any homes, any shelters in that area. So this is kind of my like shooting for the stars plan. If it blows up, I would love to be able to like make like different spots in like more rural areas to where these people can get out because that's where the huge issue is because yeah. it's like a 40 minute average 40 minute commute for these rural people who are being abused mm -hmm. and when someone's saying i'm going to murder you 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 know 40 minute drive with your kids like it's a big it's a big commitment to right. you know try to do that so that's the shooting for the stars like that's what i'm doing but for now we're probably just going to donate it to uh local like domestic abuse shelters and stuff like Absolutely. that at the start awesome. uh oh my gosh i we are rooting for you man this yeah. is amazing we're excited for you yeah. and i appreciate just seeing a young guy who's still in school it's yeah. inspiring all of us to live our lives on purpose thank you my friend it's awesome thank you thank you Man, I love hearing what that guy is doing, not only to strengthen the relationships of couples, but to help those caught in domestic abuse. It's just so cool. Luke, way to go, man. We're cheering you on. The next interview that you're going to hear with our lead pastor and his wife, Laura, is with Stephanie Morgan as she talks about her heart for serving and her heart to, uh, to give. Check this out.
So as we talk about uh, discovering your purpose, living out your purpose, and the core practices of generous giving and sacrificial serving, uh, I can think of nobody who really lives those out every single day of her life. She would never say that, so we'll say it for her. <laughs> this is Stephanie Morgan. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Brad. Hi, Laura. Hi. Hey, real quick, we've all been praying for Dan. Can you just give us a real quick update? He had four vertebrae removed, um, almost was paralyzed, but how, it's a crazy story. It's too long. We don't have time for it now, but give us an update. How's he doing? He's doing great. Do you want to come say hey, honey? Oh, he's he's at home with he's you. Eating, he's eating dinner. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Oh. yeah. He's going to come in here just to say hi. Okay. It's a little slower than normal. Well, I mean, good grief. It's okay. You get four 500 free passes. Is that, so am I right? You're only using one. Four vertebrae? Oh. Oh, what? Annie. Oh, Dude. It's so great to see you. Oh my God. Man. Oh. Last time I saw you, my oh. friend, was at the ER and you oh weren't looking this gosh. good. <laughs> How you lost feeling, 20 man? pounds, it's too. a walking miracle. Yeah. I'm telling you, it still kind of hurts a little. What? Yeah. <laughs> of course I'm it thinking. does. Of course it does, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, Dan, we're, we're all praying for you. Yeah. And um, I mean, we're obviously here to talk to Stephanie, but we just want to get an update. Yeah. And uh, we're just thanking God yeah. that they caught it and uh, that you're walking, man. You're a walking miracle. You are a walking miracle. Yeah. Well, I'll yeah. watch back here. Uh, Thank thanks, you. Buddy. Thank you for letting man. us look at it. So good to oh. see you. So, Stephanie, as we talk about generous giving and sacrificial yeah. serving, Dan kind of let the cat out of the bag because he said, he, and he told me this N D E R. Like he was in the midst of pain, he said, I know nobody who's <laughs> more generous and more giving and more serving than Stephanie. Now you are a hairstylist and you kind of consider though, that's not just a job to you, that's really a ministry, right? Yes, it's my life. That's awesome. Cause some people feel like they go to their job, but then later they do ministry. But I love that yours is together. So how do you see it as ministry? I know I know, it just to you, it's, it's just common, but how does that work for you in the vein of ministry? Well, I'm kind of like a counselor, but I don't get paid like a counselor. <laughs> so I hear everybody's problems. I know about their kids, their parents, their siblings, mm. their grandchildren. And so I pray with them. They pray with me. Um, really, they're like my family. Everybody's... It's not just like a client hairstylist relationship. It is, we have a bond. Yeah, and so yeah. they can share everything with me. Yeah. What I, what I love, Stephanie, is that, you know, what I've been saying for several months now is that we are all missionaries on mission, assigned to a mission field. And that's what you are, is a yeah. missionary, thinking of your workplace as, no, yeah. I'm, I'm a missionary for Christ. And, uh, and and you just do it out of, it just almost natural. Natural for you. abilities. Yeah, I love that. But you're not only doing that in the workplace, but talk about sacrificial serving. You are going into a prison and doing ministry. Talk about that. So my daughter's incarcerated and has been for 15 years. So I now have a heart for prison ministry and... My daughter is inmate council president of her prison. So I get donations all year long for inmate council. They do a health fair every year. So I get donations from the beauty supply, from clients, from people at church, mm -hmm. for shampoo, conditioner, soap, lotion, toothbrushes, toothpaste, chapstick. Wow. I'm trying to think just thing and then we started doing condiments from fast food restaurants mm -hmm. these things these girls don't get ranch dressing or honey or butter well and maybe a lot so of people don't we're know. blessing people hot, hot sauce a lot of people don't know stephanie how i mean because m most people have not been in prison or had maybe had someone in prison how bad mm -hmm. the food is at the prison and just a a packet of ketchup a difference it can make it makes the food better taco sauce is a huge thing they love because they don't get it there and so you can put it on food and make it taste better yeah. and a lot of those women don't have a family member sending money in mm -hmm. 
for them to buy stuff on commissary either. So it's a huge blessing for them to get those extra little things. And it's not costing anybody anything. It's something you're going to throw in the trash anyway. Right. Yeah. Arby sauce. They love Arby sauce. So don't we all? <laughs> I, yeah, it's so good. It puts but the house on too. But the things that are going to also make them their life a little bit mm -hmm. easier for that day. Right. They are there doing time, yeah. but they're still human. And uh, the majority, I would say, probably 60% of those women have no one sending any kind of money in to help them purchase hygiene or food items on commissary. So it's a blessing. And I would have never done that had I not have been in my profession yeah. and thought, oh, wow. And they now say they have the best health fairs they've ever had. I have clients that work for dentists. And so they donate toothbrushes, toothpaste, and people that travel like the wonderful snow barkers. Yeah, <laughs> They're always yeah. donating. <laughs> so it is, it is, it's a blessing to be able to help these people. But to me, it's just normal. I feel yeah. like it's just my everyday life. And one thing what I did, did want to say too, not, not to do with the prison, but I have clients that will come by. They're just having a rough day. They're not coming to get their hair done. They're just coming wow. to get a hug from me and, spend 30 minutes in the salon talking to me and clients and just leave there happy when they were down when they got there and they say i just came by to see you because i was having a rough day you know what i like stephanie i didn't mean to interrupt you earlier but i just you said one thing there's two things you said that i think are so critical one is we so often dehumanize people in the criminal justice system when they're in prison we just see yes. they're still human but what i like that you said to us today is i think most people go i could never do prison ministry how would i ever do prison ministry right. and how would i ever figure out how god could ever use me and what i love is the simplistic easy things that you're doing right where you are like hey ketchup packets arby sauce little small little condiments and and shampoos mm -hmm. and conditioners and by the way if anybody has them get them bring them to the church we'll get them to stephanie yeah. and then we'll get those out stephanie you're awesome we applaud you and uh, Way to go, girl. you are an example that we all aspire to be. I mean, you, you live it out every day, generous giving and sacrificial serving. We love you. Love you. So I am challenged and encouraged by those stories that we've heard. And we've got one more that I'm excited for you to hear about. We're going to end it by hearing from my friend, uh, Kayla Hooper, who is a teacher and is going to talk to us about how she's able to live out her purpose that she feels like God has given her to teach in our schools. Kayla, thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Why don't you tell us uh, where you teach and how long you've been teaching? So I teach at Roy Clark Elementary, and I've been teaching for four years now. And it looks different now than it, it ever has. Yes, it really has. And I am doing virtual this year, so this is the first time doing that and navigating that as well. So when you first started teaching, and even maybe think back to when you were a student, did you ever imagine that education would look the way that it, it, it sometimes has to look right now? Absolutely not. Like, yeah. even doing distance learning in the spring, it was just so surreal. Like, I never thought that we would be going to distance learning. Sure. So, especially now, it's just so different. But I'm, I want to be there for my kids. So and especially the kids who are have chosen their families have chosen for them to stay home. Right. Yeah, and I, I when I when we spoke the other day, I, I really sensed your heart to make whatever had to work work. And with us talking about sacrificial serving, going virtual was not your first choice. No, it wasn't. I was originally supposed to be um, fifth grade in person. But I was talking to another teacher in our school, and she's like, hey, there's a spot open for fourth grade virtual. Um, I contacted my principals and let them know, like, hey, I'm game to do it. Like, sign me up. <laughs> so they were like, okay. And this was like two weeks before school was supposed to start. So it's, wow. yeah. So you have in your mind what the semester is going to look like. Even though it looks different, you were specifically focused on teaching in person. Yes. And then two weeks before, you made yeah. the decision to go virtual. Yeah. I mean, in my, this is my fourth year of teaching. In each year, I've done something different. 
So, I mean, I've just learned to be flexible right. with teaching. Right. You, uh, you shared a quote with me the other day that really, really stood out to me. And it really shows not only the heart of teachers and the, and the sacrifices they make, but it really shows your heart, mm-hmm. uh, especially for you two weeks before you're supposed to teach in a classroom in person right. to say, I'm going to do what needs to be done for these kids to, to get the education. And not just the education, but just the, the connection that they still need. Because I feel like that's something that we still need, even though it, it sometimes has to look different, is connection. So why don't you share that quote with me, or with us that you shared with me the Absolutely. other day. Absolutely. It says, every child deserves a champion, an adult who will never give up on them, mm. who understands the power of connection and insists they become the best they possibly can be. And that's from Rita Pearson. Mm. Man, that's so good. Kayla, you are that person. <laughs> You're that person making those sacrifices. And when it comes to when it comes to this season, what have you really felt like overall how you've been able to live out your purpose like how because you're 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 going into a classroom but going into that classroom looks different right so something that I start out doing each year I ask you know what can I what can I do for these kids how can I be better Um, because it's so important that I am giving my best and there's another quote I'll share real quick it says the best thing about being a teacher is that it matters the hardest thing about being a teacher is that it matters every day and so just thinking about that because knowing not every day is going to be perfect but knowing that I I need to be there for my kids whether you know in person or virtually because you know I'm virtual this semester but I don't know what next semester will look like Right. Yeah. It's just kind of yeah. day by day. I mean, it I'd love is. to say it's week <laughs> by week or semester by semester, but it is just, it's just day by day. It really is. Yes. Kayla, I am just, I'm really challenged by that, that thought of every day matters. Oh yes. And that for you to go into your classroom virtually mm-hmm. with that thought of every day matters. And I loved what you said at the beginning of, of, is I, I just want to be there for my kids. So you're, you're, you're still able to be that encouraging voice and for you to say, I'm going to do whatever it takes for me to make sure that every day matters and I'm the teacher that these kids need. Yep. That, that is living your life on purpose and living your life for a purpose. And when it comes to kind of just the grand scheme of things, what would you say is, the, is one of the biggest things that God has been teaching you during this season? Uh, patience and just grace. Like, I am really bad about being hard on myself just sure. wanting and needing to be perfect but just having grace and just sometimes like back when feels like forever ago when I was in person it was just sometimes it was just the days of maybe just making a simple connection mm. not technically about the lesson that day just mm. maybe a game that we played or an activity that we did not the curriculum right just that human connection yes Wow, that's so good. Kayla, I, I'm just so thankful for what you do as a teacher. I've Thank got you. three kids in the public <laughs> system, and I've always strived to connect with the teachers of our kids, but I feel like even more so now it's, it's important for, for parents to, to connect, for teachers to connect, because we all need each other during this, this crazy season. But I thank you for being that voice uh, of hope and of love to those kids that you have. Even though it looks different, you're yes. still that voice. So thank you for showing us how to live our life on purpose and to live our life for a purpose. We have, we have a gift for you uh, and for the other teachers that are on uh, your team. And I realize that because you're in a virtual classroom, it, it'll look different, but you'll still be able to use this. Uh, awesome. It is a 3D mask bracket that, oh, okay. uh, that actually pushes the mask away from oh, your awesome. face so that you're able to be heard. And it just it alleviates kind of the pressure on your face so that right. you can teach for longer periods of time but still wearing a mask to keep yourself safe and uh, w- there's a there's some in there for the people on your team and Thank for you so any much. teachers that are watching this will you make sure to comment and let us know uh, how we can get these masks to you that would be really great we uh, we were able to contact aspen creek elementary spring creek elementary and children's middle school to make sure that we got enough for each one of those teachers so Kayla, thank you so, so much. You're welcome. 